This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. Sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host, Josh, and today's game will be pitting the Bench Warmer team of Mason and Scott versus Bench Warmer Eric and newcomer Trevor. Welcome to the bench, Trevor. Why don't you take a minute to let us know where you're from, what teams you root for, and anything else you'd like to share. I currently live in the home of the Super Bowl champs, Kansas City. Uh, I come through Wisconsin, so I grew up in Wisconsin, so just outside Milwaukee, so pretty stereotypical Packers, Bucks, Brewers, Badgers. That's my wheelhouse of sorts. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled to be on. This is exciting. Well, we're glad to have you. Uh, Mason and Scott, how are you guys doing? And let us know what your team name is. I'm doing all right. I'm glad to get back in the swing of things and get to another show. So, well, yeah, same here. I'm looking forward to uh, Damon Lillard making it to the NBA Finals soon. Um, <laughs> our team name uh, is for uh, Mason. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Alvin Gentry was uh, fired from the Pelicans today, so our team name is going to be Farewell Alvin Gentry. All right, Farewell Alvin Gentry. And uh, Eric, how you doing? And let us know what Trevor and your guys' team name is. I am. I had to work today, so I'm miserable. Um, and then I, after this, I get to go to the in-laws' house. So you do the math on that. Um, but uh, I did want to. I, I was given permission to actually make this announcement today. Um, apparently, we waited long enough. I don't know the logistics of it. Um, but I just want to let everyone know my wife's pregnant. So in about what how long is pregnancy normally last you know whenever that is nine months sure nine months whatever it is um i'm gonna disappear for a long time um uh, but yeah so um our team name today um trevor's actually helped me um come up with this team and he's very clever we've known each other for a whole 10 minutes now um so a nice little randomizer in my phone we came up with uh just get what just get what all right yeah. you, you can put some inflection on it and go you, you can just go just get what so there you go all right well let's get on to the rules we will be starting off with the tailgate to warm up the teams this will be followed by four quarters of play each with a different trivia style the styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show and i will explain them as we go along like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions pertaining to sports. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from the points they've accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. It's time for the tailgate, consisting of three warm up questions worth 10 points each. Today's tailgate has a theme. Team name changes. Question one. We are all aware that the Washington football team is the current name for the NFL team in D.C. But what university from the Mid-America Conference, the MAC, ditched the name Redskins and became the Red Hawks back in 1997? Yeah, you got that. We, we can check in. All right. So just get what? <laughs> just checked in. <laughs> So, farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can uh, talk it out. First off, uh, congratulations, Eric, on the pregnancy. And I cannot wait for about 10 months from now when I might have a chance at winning some of these games. <laughs> um, Man, Mac. All right. Name some teams in the Mac. I have an idea. Okay. I don't remember if this is the right map. Uh, I think Miami of Ohio is that, but I'm not 100% on that. I feel like I should know their name. They've had some prolific players. I've certainly seen them play. So MAC teams are like we're talking like Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, like Central Michigan, Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan. Right. It's not any of them. Yeah. I'm okay with Miami of Ohio if that's what came to you. I like I said, it just came to me, but I'm because just because I know that's a MAC team, and I think it's something like that for their mascot but I'm not close to being sure. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I don't think we're going to come up with anything else. Okay. Oh, we're going to go and check in with Miami of Ohio. All right. Farewell, Alvin Gentry. Checked in with Miami of Ohio. And just get what? What is your guys' answer? I've wondered a lot about how this team got its name. 
we have all, we also checked in with Miami of Ohio. And the correct answer is Miami University of Ohio. Uh, the name change was made after consulting with the Miami tribe of Oklahoma. Good job, guys. Good way to start it out. Moving on to question two. Houston's major league team went by what name for their first three seasons before changing their name in 1965? We can check that in. All right, farewell, Alvin Gentry's checked in, so just get what? Now you guys can talk it out. Just based on my shared knowledge of um, MLB The Show from PS4, um, I'm pretty sure when you scroll through the jerseys, um, I think it was like the Colt 45s or something like that. That sounds like a great answer for Texas. Uh, it rings a bell, at least, in my mind. I, I can picture the jerseys as I – it's like my thing when I play any game. I check everybody's old jerseys. Yeah. So um, if you're good with that, I'm good I'm, with Yeah, that, that, that sounds great. Makes sense. All right, so we're going to check in with the Colt 45s. All right, just get what? Checking in with the Colt 45s. And farewell, Elvin Gentry. What do you guys got? Yeah, uh, Mason and I immediately typed the same answer to each other. Eric, I know it for the same exact reason that you do. Um, Because I love the the Houston Stadium, so I'd always use them, and I'd always get the throwback jerseys. Uh, The answer is the Colt 45s. And the correct answer is, in fact, the Colt 45s. Uh, By the end of 1964, Houston was reimagining itself as a city of the future. NASA had decided to bring its mission control center there, and the Space Age Astrodome was set to open for the 65 season. In advance of that, the baseball team was renamed the Astros. Moving on to question three. Before becoming the Maple Leafs in 1927, Toronto's NHL team went by what name? It is unknown if they drank green beer out of the Stanley Cup after they won it in 1922. So if you're good, Trevor, I'm good. I just I wanted to let them. Yeah, I didn't want to check in too fast. We know you know it. Uh, so just get what you guys are checked in then. Yeah, well, yeah, we're checked in. All right. So farewell, Evan Gentry. You guys can talk it out. So it's going to be something Irish theme, but I think Shamrocks makes sense because. Leaf, shamrock, I mean, it's shape-wise, it's, you know, somewhat similar. They both come from the earth. I'm just, I'm trying to think why Toronto would have an Irish connection. That doesn't make much sense to me. Right. It's a melting pot. <laughs> Toronto pot of gold. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lucky charm. That's why I said, the first thing I typed to Mason was the leprechauns. <laughs> I mean, it could be any of them, honestly. Just a box of cereal. <laughs> Sorry. I think the Toronto Ken Shamrocks makes the most sense to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with Shamrocks because I don't have anything better. I, yeah. I mean, the clue, the green beer. I mean, it's obviously something like St. Patrick's Day theme, but. Yeah. I'd, or Irish, but I would I would think it, Shamrocks makes mo- the most sense closest to Maple Leaf, like you said, I think. I think so, too. So we'll go ahead and check in with the Shamrocks. So farewell, Elvin Gentry has checked in with the Shamrocks. Uh, just get what? What do you guys got? So, um, based on my rich Irish heritage, um, being Canadian, um, we checked in with uh, the corned beef and cabbage. No, um, it was actually uh, the Toronto St. Patrick's. And the correct answer is the Toronto St. Patrick's. After heading the ownership group who purchased the team in 1927, Con Smythe immediately renamed the team the Toronto Maple Leafs after the national symbol of Canada. All right, so heading into the first quarter, we have a score of just get what with 30 and farewell, Elvin Gentry with 20. Today's first quarter will be the Dean's List. The Dean's List. For this quarter, there will be three lists containing 10 items where the teams will go back and forth, guessing the items on the list. If a team guesses incorrectly, the other team can attempt to finish out that list. Each team is allowed one mulligan to be used after an incorrect guess. Each item is worth 10 points. So list number one is the 10 players with the highest OPS, that's on base plus slugging, for Major League Baseball in 2019. And we will be starting with the team that is currently trailing, which is Farewell, Elvin Gentry. We'll go with uh, Mike Trout. Mike Trout is number two on the list with an OPS of 1.083. 
Just get what? You guys are up. We're going to say uh, from my hometown team, Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich, number one on the list with an OPS of 1.100. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go with uh, the, the man who was trying to rival uh, the aforementioned Christian Yelich for NL MVP for the entire season, uh, Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger is number three on the list with an OPS of 1.035. We're going to check in with Nelson Cruz. You guys are working your way pretty much down the list. Nelson Cruz is number four on the list with an OPS of 1.031. He played at LSU, so we're going to go with Alex Bregman. Still going down the list here. Alex Bregman, number five with an OPS of 1.015. We're going to go with a great member of the Colorado Rockies, Arenado. Well, you've broken the streak of going kind of in the top, but Nolan Arenado is on the list at number nine with an OPS of 0.962. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, the new Dodger, Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts. It's never good when there's a pause. (laughs) Mookie Betts is not in the top 20. Goodness. I knew he had a down year, but I didn't think it was that bad. Would you guys like to use your mulligan? We have a bunch of names here, and it's a crapshoot, I feel like. Yeah, I'd rather save it for something that would feel a little bit better. Yeah, let's hold on to it. All right, so farewell, Elvin Gentry is not going to use their mulligan. So just get what? You guys can try to complete the list. So we have Soto, Springer, Rendon, uh, you said Correa. Yeah, just just a thought of someone. Yeah, um, I want to say the dude from Arizona, Marte. I don't know his first name. Sterling? No, no, he's a different guy. There's been a bunch. There's like Damaso Marte, Sterling Marte. There's a, this is a different one. Um, it starts with a K. I, I just I'm spacing on his first okay. name. The Nationals had. I mean, they went all the way. A uh, couple great hitters. I think it's worth a worth a shot. All right, which one, Soto or Rendon? Soto. All right, let's check in with uh, Soto. Juan Soto, number 10 on the list with an OPS of .949. Do we dare go for his teammate? I think that's safe. They had a good year. I mean, yeah, they they snuck into the playoffs uh, beating my Brewers. Uh, still, I'm still a little salty about it. Uh, but I have to acknowledge, yeah, I think, I think we can go th- with Rendon and see what happens. All right, let's go with it. All right, we'll, we'll check in with Rendon. Anthony Rendon, number six on the list with an OPS of 1.010. I'm out. <laughs> How many more do we have? Two. Two? Two. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of other big-name players that hit well. I mean, did, did, did Correa hit a lot of like, – what's his home run numbers look like? I don't think he's known for being a superpower hitter. So I think that might take him out. Yeah. I was I I didn't put this in our chat, but someone like Joey Votto, maybe 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 a few years ago. I don't think nineteen. Okay. Anybody on um, Houston other than El Tuve and Correa? I mean, there was Bregman, but this isn't this isn't Astros. But someone like Marcelo Zuna is he interesting? Could be. Of the list I sent you earlier, um, we got Springer left. Yeah, and that's about it. Which is there a person? Is there a person you feel most confident in that like of these? So I would say Springer would be the top on my list. I can, I can trust you with that. We're at the point where any name sounds as good as any other. All right. We're going to check in with George Springer. George Springer, number eight on the list. OPS, 0.974. What a pull. So I, I got nothing left. So if you want to just pick, pick somebody, you want to go with Ozuna? Yeah, let's just go for that wild card. Uh, we'll say Marcel Ozuna. Marcel Ozuna is not in the top 20. Okay. Do you guys want to use your mulligan for the last item? You know you want to. No, we're all right. <laughs> all right. Hard pass, hard pass. Just get what is not going to use their um, mulligan for the last item. And the, he was mentioned by Eric. Number seven on the list is, I think it's Cattell Marte. Cattell Marte. With a <sighs> OPS of 0.981. So after the first list... Uh, just get what brought in 60 points and farewell Elvin Gentry got 30. So moving on to list number two, which we'll be starting with just get what I need you to name the 10 players with the most career rushing yards for the green Bay Packers. 
Oh boy, I will I will lose all I will lose all sorts of cred. Everyone in my family, I'll be disowned. That's part of why these wheelhouses are awesome, because you either know them or you get embarrassed. Yeah, either way, it's a win. Really hot. There has to be this one. So we'll we'll check in with Amon Green. Amon Green, number one on the list with eight thousand three hundred and twenty-two rushing yards. Um I'm going to go with this one because he actually went to the same high school I went to. Um, that's going to be Jim Taylor. Jim Taylor, number two on the list with 8,207 rushing yards. I will go with, uh, check in with Dorsey Levins. Dorsey Levins, number six on the list with 3,937 rushing yards. All right. We're going to go with the other name that I had, Paul Horning. Paul Horning, number nine on the list with 3,711 rushing yards. Not a team that is known for rushing the ball, obviously. No, they're not. (laughs) All right, we're going to go with Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy sneaks into the top 10 at number 10 with 3,435 rushing yards. It's such a low number to be in the top 10. All right, we're going to check in with Ryan Grant. Ryan Grant, number five on the list with 4,143 rushing yards. How many do we have left? There are four left. You're missing three, four, seven, and eight. Does that name mean anything to you? It does not, but that's it, it, <laughs> it might just be before my time. No, it was. It's like 70s, I want to say. Matt would be salivating right now at this oh, list he in general. <laughs> he could tell you everybody's birthday, their address. So many of those Packers teams were bad for a long time. Not long enough. <laughs> um, okay, I, let, let's check in with John Brockington. John Brockington, number three on the list with 5,024 yards. Wow. Josh, this is for you. Who? (laughs) The third best running back in Packer history. That's not saying much. We have a Packers fan and he didn't even know. All right. I guess we're going to do it. We're going to check in with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers (laughs) is number 13 on the list with 3,122 yards. That was a good guess. That would have been sneaky. Yeah, not a bad idea. So there are three items left. You guys want to use your mulligan? Nope. Didn't think so. So just get what you guys can try to finish out the list. Okay. Okay, Eric. This is their their Aaron Rodgers thought uh, made me think of not just strictly running back, long time fullback William William Henderson. He was around for a long time. He might have snuck in there, but I don't know if he had enough to do to get in this list. Okay. Um, your your answer that you put in that chat of uh, Edgar Bennett, yeah. is, is solid. Um, and what about Aaron Jones? Is he, at three thousand? I mean, he's only been good for maybe two years, right? The complaint of Packers fans the past couple of years is that he's just not getting enough opportunities. Yeah, and then this year he finally got the chance and he blew up. So he's probably he's got to be he's not. I don't think he's at three then. I if he is, he's right. At the bottom. All right. So what about your, your fullback or um, Edgar Bennett? Which one do you feel better about? Edgar Bennett was a running back. Yeah. So, and he's their running backs. He was a running backs coach. So I think it's a good, I think it's a good option. All right. Let's go with that. Go ahead. All right. Check in with Edgar Bennett. Edgar Bennett is number 11 on the list Ooh. with 3,353 <laughs> yards. Okay. So three items remaining. Would you guys like to use your mulligan? No. I don't think so. Saving it for the third list. All right. So number four, Tony Canadio with 4,197 yards. Uh, At number seven is Clark Hinkle with 3,860 yards. And number eight, I'm not sure if it's Gary or Jerry Ellis with 3,826 yards. It's Perry Ellis. I have a shirt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> these guys are before my time i apologize to all uh veteran packers fans listening <laughs> including matt he will not be pleased matt, matt's screaming at his computer right now <sighs> okay moving on to list number three both teams have their mulligan since the uefa is currently going on i would like you to list the last 10 unique teams to have won the uefa champions league title 
Sorry, Scott. <laughs> we could have used our mulligan. <laughs> Pointless now. Yeah. We could have used our mulligan and got George Springer back in the first one. Damn it. <laughs> farewell, Elvin Gentry is uh, first up. Yeah, it's going to be Farewell Scott's Points is what our new team name is going to be. Okay. Well, trying to think of teams. That would... I think Barcelona probably. Sure. Go for it. We're going to check in with Barcelona. Barcelona, yes. Uh, they have had four titles in the span of these last 10, 2006, 2009, 2011, and 2015, most recently. So we can check in with Liverpool. Liverpool, the most recent UEFA champion. Uh, they also won it in 2005 during the span of these last 10 unique winners. So they are correct. Uh, we're going to go with Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, they have won two in 2013 and 2001. Um, so they are on the list. Just get what? You guys are up. So I, I can go in order and just, I mean, it's fine. We can go with uh, after Liverpool the year before was uh, Real Madrid. So if you're good with that, I'm good with that. Yep. They're my, they're my favorite team. So there you go. Real Madrid. Real Madrid, probably the one you always should go with when there's a UEFA question. In the span of the last 10 unique, they've won seven titles. 98, 2000, 2002, 2014, and three years in a row from 2016 to 2018. All right. Manchester United. Manchester United in this span has won twice, uh, 1999 and 2008. Let's check in with Inter Milan. Inter Milan won in 2010. That is correct. Um, We're going to go with Chelsea. Chelsea won the UEFA Champion League title in 2012. They are on the list. I say we go with AC Milan here. Okay. I I can't remember which year it was, but... It was it was within the last ten years. It's been fairly recent. I know they had Ronaldinho for a little bit, so I think it was after that. Okay. I think I think they want to they beat somebody big that they shouldn't have beat. Okay. So let's let's go with AC Milan on this. Sure. AC Milan has won twice in the span of this list in two thousand three and two thousand seven. Wow, seven already? Jeez. So our soccer knowledge is so bad that Scott and I were wondering if AC Milan was different than Inter Milan. And now we know it is. Now we know it is. We're, we're going to go with Arsenal. Arsenal has not been one of the last 10 unique teams to win. I'm assuming you'd like to use your mulligan. No. <laughs> well, no, because if we use it, that eliminates one possible answer for them. So we can just pass on the mulligan. I, I guess technically you can. That is true, yeah. I, you guys can forego your mulligan. I don't even know if we have a name. Is that unprecedented? I don't know if that's happened. It is. It is. Mason, let's, <laughs> let's do it. I'm tired of setting negative history. Let's do a positive thing and say, we didn't need a mulligan. That's how bad we were at this category. We have a first now. A team who could use a mulligan is choosing not to use their mulligan at all. All right, just get what? You guys can try to get those last two on the list. Uh, you said Borussia Dortmund. I, I guess I don't remember if they've, if they've been... All the way. You're not old enough. Okay. How old are you? I'm 27. That you're not old enough. Okay. Um, if it goes back to nine, I mean, you are, you would have been alive. But I was not watching um, Champions no, League I don't, soccer. I don't think you were watching the UEFA on, you know, rabbit ears. Okay. Um, it was like the early stages of the interwebs. No, but they, in like 90, what was the last year? Uh, the last year I have is on file is 98 with Real Madrid. Okay. So 97, 98, I think this may have been... 96, 97, okay. Borussia Dortmund yeah. won. Yeah. You, also, you also put down Porto? Yes, that's definitely okay. on there as well. I feel like if, 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 you, if you know that for sure, that's the one we should go with. I mean, we have a mulligan either way. Okay, yeah. So I say if we go Dortmund, then I know Porto's on there and we're good. Cool. So Yeah, all right. let's roll with it. Let's check in with uh, Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund won in 1997 and is on the list. And then our, our last one, Trevor, go ahead with it. All right, we'll check in with Porto. Porto is the last remaining team on the list. They won in 2004. For these 10 unique, it went all the way back to 1997. I love these soccer lists. No team used the mulligan, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Scott. No teams used their mulligan. For the first quarter, 
it felt more lopsided than it is. Uh, Just get what? Scored 160 points, and Farewell Evan Gentry scored 100, so not too bad. After the first quarter, we have scores of Just Get What with a total of 190, and Farewell Evelyn Gentry with 120. Today's second quarter will be How Low Can You Go? How Low Can You Go? For this quarter, there will be four questions consisting of five clues, given one at a time. After each clue, both teams will decide if they want to check in with their guests by sending a chat to the host. If a correct answer is checked in after the first clue, the team will receive 50 points. After the second clue, 40. After the third clue, 30. And so on. Question 1. Who am I? Clue 1. I played for the Duke Blue Devils and was drafted by a New York team. Scott, hold on a minute. He's got this. I know a lot about Duke, <laughs> thanks to my dad. We'll take another clue. All right. So, farewell, Evan Gentry. Wants another clue. Just get what, Trevor? This is you, you made it difficult. Yeah, I, I really, I, I like that so much. But it would help me towards getting my record back. So, or we are playing with a lead. Does that factor into our decision here? A significant lead. Uh, so say we miss. Yeah. And they're the best they can get is 40. So then we, we're still up by 30. I just need you to tell me that you want to go for it, and then we'll go for it. I'm here for the fun. I say we go with it and live on the edge. All right, send it to him. Should have went for it, Mason. Yeah, but we don't even know if we're close to being right. <laughs> okay, so now you guys can actually talk out loud. The, their answer has been submitted. So clue number two. I was drafted in the first round. I mean, I assumed it was a first round pick. (laughs) Yeah, same. Does nothing. That does not help. It's it's not taking me off the Jay Williams scent at all. Okay. I still feel great about him because I feel like there can be so many good clues. He's an analyst now. He had a motorcycle accident, like for the rest of the clues. Like it's easy to get five like pretty significant clues about him as opposed to like Sheldon Williams, who also went to Duke and was drafted by the Knicks. But then it's just like there's not much else you can say about Sheldon Williams besides that he's married to Candace Parker. What about the Nets? Uh, I was trying to think. I can't remember a lot of guys that they drafted from Duke. Oh, wait. It would have been New Jersey, though, at the time, right? So then. Well, I mean, up until they were Brooklyn. But I can't think of anyone recent that they drafted. Yeah. You know, I mean, this could be R.J. Barrett. I doubt it. I mean, that seems kind of so recent. I would have trouble writing five clues about R.J. Barrett. I know that. But it could also this, this can also go back to, you know, 80s, 90s, you know. Um, it could be a Plumlee, right? There are 45 of them. Yeah, I was going to say, just by, by sheer percentage, <laughs> <laughs> we have a higher probability of it being a Plumlee. I mean, if you want to go for it, it's fine. I just, I mean, that didn't really help at all. I know. We should probably hear one more, right? I hate to do that because, you know. We're already down. I, I'm just going to assume they got it right. So it's like trying to, you know. Yeah, we should probably just take another one, huh? Yeah. Josh took the time to write these clues. Let's, you know. Your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Go go ahead, Josh. We'll take another one. Clue number three. I was drafted in 2019. So it's RJ. Oh, it's RJ Barrett. Unless they had, did they have a second pick that we don't know about? Not in the first round, I don't think. Okay, so it was RJ, Zion, Cam Reddish was Atlanta. Atlanta, yep. Um, Who else was on there? I think they might have had like a guy go late but i don't think it was to the knicks all right let's uh we'll check in with rj barrett all right after the third clue farewell evan gentry is checking in with rj barrett and just get what you checked in after the first clue with whom go ahead trevor this is all you uh so i noticed in your first clue you did not mention basketball i my mind immediately went to basketball Couldn't think of anyone, so I switched gears to football and said, well, Daniel Jones played for Duke football, and now is now on the New York Giants, so why not take the risk and go for it? So we checked in with Daniel Jones. All right, so Jessica, what checks in with Daniel Jones? Both of these answers fit the first three clues. Let me finish out the other clues and see whom is right. Daniel Jones is right. Clue number four, I am from Canada. Oh, it's R.J. Barrett. Clue number five. I was 
the second of three Blue Devils drafted in the top 10 of the NBA draft? Uh, Dang it. The correct answer is R.J. Barrett. As I mentioned, Daniel Jones fit the criteria for the first three. Uh, You guys mentioned some names which were not uh, correct for Blue Devils selected by a New York team. Uh, The other ones I have are Mason Plumlee, drafted by the Brooklyn Nets in 2013. Art Heyman was drafted by the New York Knicks in 1963. Dave Brown was drafted by the New York Giants in the first round of the 1992 Supplemental Draft. Those are the only ones I have. Sheldon Williams was drafted by the Hawks. Yeah, I think there was a a trade or something. Could have been, but Farewell Evan Gentry is starting to make up some ground. Moving on to question two. What am I? Clue one. I had a trademark dispute with Division II Washburn University in Topeka, Kansas. We'll take another clue, Josh. All right. Farewell Evan Gentry is going to take another clue. Just get what? What are you guys thinking? Can we try to do it two times in a row? Um, we could get the lead after this, Mason. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little gun shy after that. Uh, I'm, I say we go with it. Your, your trivia instincts have paid off for us before in this game. Let's go with it. You want to? I'm, I'm good if you are. Yeah, let's do it. I love gambling. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So why not? <laughs> that is what Aaliyah told me in the year 2000. <laughs> I love that movie, uh, Romeo Must Die. So Right? <laughs> this is either going to work out really well for us, Mason, or it's going to completely suck. Okay, moving on to clue number two for Farewell Elvin Gentry. Clue two is, I am the only school in my conference and one of only four Power Five schools that does not currently have a baseball team. What schools don't have a baseball team? I don't really follow college baseball, so that sucks. Um, I think the SEC, all of theirs are there. Softball, there's like a couple of softball, but baseball, all the SEC is there. Right. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking SEC. Also, you got to put it together with the, the trademark thing. So Yeah. That, again, that's probably over a nickname or a mascot or something yeah so i was thinking like nickname logo mascot we should probably eliminate teams that have a very common nickname yeah like tigers and bears could it be uh the kansas jayhawks because topeka Mm, yeah seems too obvious maybe but yeah i don't know if they have a baseball team but right i definitely have never heard of their baseball team probably aren't good anyway I watched college world series i don't remember them ever getting close yeah yeah i was gonna say I, i don't i don't even i can't recall anything I've ever heard about a Kansas Jayhawks baseball team. Yeah. I, I mean, that clue at least helps us a little bit, but I, I don't. Yeah. We should probably take another one. Yeah. Hey, it worked out last time. We went for 30. So maybe we can do it again. Next clue, please. Next clue. Clue number three. My basketball team won our first NCAA championship in 1941. Still be Kansas <laughs> Jayhawks. I feel like I might've been earlier than that. Cause Naismith was there. I mean, he invented basketball and he was a coach there. So, like, <laughs> you think maybe he won one earlier. Right. So, it's an old basketball school that doesn't have baseball. Right. It's Power Five. At least it kind of narrows it a little bit, but I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't either. Sucks to go all the way down here, but yep, I'm, I don't have anything. So, I think we'll take another. Next clue. Clue number four. My football team plays at Camp Randall Stadium. Oh, that's um, that's Big Ten. Which one is it? Hold on. Camp Randall. That's a Big Ten school. I'm trying to think where. That's Wisconsin. Okay. Oh, and Washburn. So they were the Washburn Badgers? <laughs> if you know the stadium, then let's do it. I'm over 50%. That clicked. I was going through all the teams. It could be Minnesota. Is Minnesota? The Golden Gophers? I mean, that's a possibility because that's such a distinct thing. I don't know what the name of their stadium is. Is this a know your host question? Or, it's... or know your guest. Wisconsin clicked when I was going through the teams. I'm not 100%, but that felt right. And I guess guess they don't have a baseball team. I can't recall them having it, but I mean. I mean, at this point, we're either going to get it right for 20, take another clue, maybe get it right for 10, or get nothing. It's really not that much of a swing. Yeah, I mean, we'll just take, I say we just go for the 20. Yep. We'll go with uh, Wisconsin. All right, so checking in with Wisconsin after the fourth clue. And just get what? You guys checked in after the first clue with what? So I do remember seeing, I don't know where I saw this, 
um, there was that the, the University of Wisconsin was suing, um, was it the Washburn, whatever, um, over the W. Uh, the style of the W um, was very similar. One was blue, I think, and, you know, Wisconsin's red. Um, so we checked in with University of Wisconsin. Technically, you checked in with Wisconsin University. Same difference. No, it is not the same difference because, like, Northwestern University is not the University of Northwestern. They are Northwestern University. However, you did say the University of Wisconsin, and I am also giving credit for just Wisconsin. So both right. teams right. are correct. And the issue was, involved was uh, the Badgers athletic logo, the, quote, Motion W. The other three schools who don't have a baseball team in the Power Five are Colorado, Iowa State, and Syracuse. And the 1941 NCAA tournament was an 18 tournament. Wisconsin beat Dartmouth, Pittsburgh, and Washington State to win the tournament. That was a who's who of powerhouse basketball teams that year. <laughs> that one was a little bit of know your guest. That's what I sent Trevor. Yeah, yeah. The University of Minnesota, they play at TCF Bank Stadium, if you want. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where the Vikings played for like a year or two. Correct. Before U.S. Bank Stadium was built for them. We like our banks. Banks have a lot of money. So clue number five for that one was Barry Alvarez is my current athletic director. That would not have helped me. <laughs> I, I would have been able to get there. I, I know the name. Moving on to question three. When am I? Clue one. Pete Sampras won the Wimbledon Championship. We got to do it again. We got to do it again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do it again, guys. <laughs> hey, go for it. You got this. Not a fan of Josh's clues. One's, one's good enough. It was, I believe it was the same year that Wisconsin won their first uh, national championship, 1941. Uh, <laughs> are, are you checking that in? Listen, we're just, we're just, we're just talking. <laughs> this is just banter. Uh, I suppose we got to take another one unless we want to narrow it down to like well, how many. He's won a few, so. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right, so just get what is going to wait for another clue this time. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we will too. Okay, so moving on to clue number two. Drew Bledsoe set the NFL single game record for pass attempts with 70 in a game between the New England Patriots and the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I might be right with what I said first, Mason. If it is, I'm going to be upset because you <laughs> threw one out. And it might, it might very well be that. Feel free to check it in if you guys want. <laughs> Not yet. But they're probably going to go for it. Yeah, all right. Let's take another clue, Mason. All right, so... Farewell, Elvin Gentry. We'll take another clue. Now we're just waiting on just get what? Erica, I, if you know something, I'm all ears. I, I have a ballpark, but... There is a ballpark. That ballpark would be the career length of Pete Sampras. Andrew Bledsoe. Andrew Bledsoe, right. So in that Venn diagram, <laughs> right. there's quite a bit of crossover, I think. So... Uh, should we take another one, you think? Let's take one more. Clue three, 45-year-old George Foreman became boxing's oldest heavyweight champion when he knocked out Michael Moore. I'll send it. Just get what has submitted their guess. So farewell, Evan Gentry. You guys can talk it out and let me know if you need another clue. Mason, I'm leaning towards 95 based on the George Foreman clue. Yeah, like I said, you said 96, 97, but that's starting to move me closer to the, the front of the decade. That's why I'm leaning more towards 95. We probably need another clue, though, just to finalize it. Yeah. All right, so you need one more clue? Yeah. Clue four. The Arkansas Razorbacks won the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament. The tournament. Okay, so it's either 94 or 95. That's when they had Corliss Williamson. Because if it's like the 94 season, it would be 95 that they won the championship. Right. I'm trying to remember when he was drafted. I'm still on 95. Yeah, that doesn't... I know they won one in the 90s. I couldn't have told you when. It's either 94 or 95, for sure. There is one more clue, if you would like it. Yeah, so the question is, we could take a 50-50 chance on a 20-point. Right. Where we take the 10, which we'll probably be able to... I would hope we'd be able to easily get. Yeah, we should probably just take it and get the guaranteed points. Yeah, let's just take the last one. All right, the last clue... Clue five. 
there was a major league baseball strike and an NHL lockout. It's it's ninety four. Okay, well I'm glad we kind of waited because we're leaning towards ninety five for most of it. Yeah. All right. So we'll check in with nineteen ninety four. All right. So farewell, Evan Gentry is checking with nineteen ninety four after the fifth clue, and just get what checked in after the third clue with what? We also went with nineteen ninety four. And the correct answer is 1994. Okay, moving on to the last question in this quarter. Question four, who am I? Clue number one, I retired from my sport on February 26th of this year. Everything pre-COVID is like a whole different year for me, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of people that retired this year, whatever I consider this year. This year is 2020. Just yeah. wanted to point that out. We are still in that year. Still, okay. Just checking. I'm going to take in another one. I was thinking the same thing. I have an idea, but I not concrete. All right. So just get what is going to wait for another clue. Farewell, Elvin Gentry. What are you guys thinking? I mean, I think, I think we're going to need another one. I just... Yep. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Clue number two. I won a silver medal at the London Olympics in 2012. I mean, if you even have an inkling, maybe it's just worth the risk at this point. I guess it's kind of just a hunch, and it might fit, but... I I think we should go for it. All right. Yep, send it to them. Go ahead. We have to play under the assumption that they're going to get it right, so we might as well take the risk. Just get what? What do you guys think? You guys can talk it out loud now. They've submitted their guess. Okay. Uh, I feel like Ledecky and Missy Franklin are too young. Okay. And to retire now, because they're both... Not, I mean, I, I know what Missy Franklin's a little older. She, she was, I think she's older. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Missy Franklin. So she, he said silver medalist at the 2012 games, but that that doesn't necessarily exclude that they won golds at others. I'm, I want to say they both won gold in 12. Yeah. Do you think we're on the right track with swimming? Maybe, maybe not because for just to win one medal. Yeah. Could it be a gymnast? A name I remember from 2012. I think it was 2012. Michaela Maroney. She famously won silver and had that really unimpressed meme face. Yeah. I don't know if she's retiring in 2020. I just know that I'm pretty confident that Michaela Maroney won a silver that year. Um, but she also won the gold too, though. What did she win the gold in? Do you know her? The, the, the team event. The team event? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we should just take another to narrow it down? Might as well. Yeah. Okay. So just get what's going to take another clue. Clue number three. I completed my career Grand Slam at the age of 25 in 2012. Grand Slam, Eric, makes me think tennis. Okay. I don't know if other sports, like call other sports, how many sports call it Grand Grand Slam? Golf. Golf, yeah. Was golf in the Olympics in 2012? I feel like it's more of a recent addition, isn't it? Yeah. So tennis. Who's a tennis player that would have retired this year? Oh, Sharapova, right? Didn't she retire? She did retire. I remember vaguely remember her retiring. Am I wrong on that? I don't remember it, but that makes sense for clues. Grand Slam at a young age. I'm good with that. I don't think we're going to get somewhere better. All right, so let's check in with Maria Sharapova. All right, so just get what? Checked in after the third clue with Maria Sharapova. And farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys checked in after the second clue with what answer? Uh, I'm going to take the fall for this one because I thought that he retired more recently. Maybe it wasn't. And... um. So we went with Michael Phelps. All right. So farewell, Evan Gentry checked in with Michael Phelps. The the final two clues are I am the third in all-time earnings for my sport. And clue number five is I launched my confectionery company, Sugar Pova, in 2013. The correct answer is Maria Sharapova. Um, She won five Grand Slam titles, uh, two of which were French Opens. So heading into halftime, we have the following scores. Farewell, Elvin Gentry has 180 points. Uh, and Just Get What is at an even 300. So it is now time for the halftime show. It is now time for the halftime show. There will be five entertainment questions pertaining to sports. With each question worth 20 points. Question number one. In the movie Slapshot, what fictional town is home to the minor league hockey team, the Chiefs? All right, Scott, we're checked in. Oh, Josh, too, we're checked in. (laughs) 
Just get what is checked in. <laughs> Mason, Mason, we're checked in. Well, thanks for letting me know. So, uh, farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can uh, talk it out. It's not a Mighty Ducks hockey question. I'm, I'm, I'm out. It is not a Mighty Ducks, nor a D2 or D40 or whatever they're up to now. Okay, don't tease me with sequels that don't exist. <laughs> yeah, I, this could be anything. There's no, there's no way for me to even try to attack this. Like, except maybe it's hockey town. The hot, yeah. Like, I, but again, it's a fictional name, so it can be anything. Puckville. That's not bad, actually. <laughs> I don't hate that. No, I, I don't know. I mean, we can tap or we can come up with something clever. I, I, yeah, I just I don't even know the plot of the movie. So it's like I don't even have anything to go off of anyway. It's uh, it's about hockey. Well, yeah, I kind of figured that. I think it's a comedy. Slapstick comedy. You're right. Yeah. I like Puckville. All right. We're going to check in with Puckville. All right. Farewell, Alvin Gentry is checking in with Puckville. And just get what? How about you guys? It's actually a very good movie, Scott. Um, I'm sure I, I, I'm not averse to hockey movies, obviously. Give it a shot. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favorite hockey movies. Um, the name kind of escaped me for a minute, but I was pretty sure it was Charlestown, and then Trevor backed me up on it. So uh, we checked up with uh, or checked in with Charlestown. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is Charlestown. In the movie, Bruce Boudreau appears wearing number seven for the Hyannisport Presidents. He was one of several players for the uh, Johnstown Jets minor league hockey team that were used as extras. Moving on to question two. What hip-hop group finishes their song Triumph with the line, Guaranteed made him jump like Rod Strickland? So happy there's a Rod Strickland reference in this episode. Literally the second time I heard that name, the first time was on that Dean's list from the 90s. Otherwise, I don't know the name. All right, uh, Mason, Scott, and Josh, we're going to check in. Just get what is checked in. So farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. All right. So Mason typed to me the 316 Mafia, and I thought it was Stone Cold's uh, fan club. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it's 36 Mafia. I'm thinking my hope is that it was somewhat around the time Rod Strickland was actually relevant, which would be like the early to mid 90s. So then, you know, Thinking along that, it's like I'm thinking, you know, Tribe Called Quest, Wu Tang Clan, Naughty by Nature. It's, you know, kind of what I'm thinking. Naughty by Nature is very sporty, and their like song, you know, Hip Hop Array is, you know, like a jock jam. And but Wu Tang was so huge at the time that I could see them having a song titled Triumph. I'm, I'm good with whichever one you feel best about. Out of, of the two, I'd probably say Wu Tang Clan. That's fine with me. All right, we're gonna check in with uh, the Wu Tang Clan. All right, farewell, Oven Gentry checks in with the Wu Tang Clan, and just get what? What do you guys got? We also went with Wu Tang Clan. Both teams will be getting points. The correct answer is the Wu Tang Clan. Just to let you know that uh, Strickland's son Ty currently plays basketball for Temple after transferring from not Wisconsin University but the University of Wisconsin. The no, University no, of Wisconsin. no, no, these. <laughs> Don't you put that on. <laughs> if there's a school Wisconsin hates more than any other, um, it's Ohio State University. Up there with uh, Minnesota. Moving on to question three. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name of the character, but let's go with it. Uh, who portrays Joe Cutell? Spencer Strassmore's partner at Anderson Financial in the TV show ballers so i don't know if it's cutel or cutel or cuddle or can you spell it josh k-u-t-e-l so who portrays that guy who portrays that guy <laughs> all right uh mason scott and josh we are checked in i'm gonna start docking points <laughs> that's fine that's fine <laughs> just get one is, <laughs> just get one is checked in so farewell elvin gentry you guys can talk it out Mason, I've seen like the pilot episode of Ballers and maybe the episode after. I enjoyed it, but just like did not continue watching it for whatever reason. I don't even know if this character was in those episodes. I think so. I rem- I definitely remember, you know, like one of Eric's favorite comedians being in it. I'm just trying to narrow down. I know Eric has a lot of comedians that he likes. So honestly, this is the third question in the row where I just have like nothing. I feel like Josh and I are on complete opposite wavelengths when it comes to halftime questions. I got nothing for this. Uh, all, right. all right, let's just name some comedians that are pretty somewhat relevant, I guess. 
Will Ferrell, Adam Sandler, Kevin James. I don't think it's any of them. Okay, well, I'm just naming comedians. That no, no, that's fine. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's fine. Rob Schneider. <laughs> I said relevant now. He was never relevant. <laughs> oh, really? I don't know if that's true. Deuce Bigelow has <laughs> zero relevance. <laughs> a place in my heart. Oh. Benchwarmers, the movie? <laughs> Rob Schneider is in that movie. <laughs> that, that doesn't make him relevant, even though it shares the name with this podcast. Mason, I don't think it's like an A-lister, you know, that they, they wouldn't star in like, a, yeah. you know. Hey, series. hey, you be careful with <laughs> what you say about this man. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. It's not. We don't know if it's a man or not. We don't know. We haven't heard the answer yet. I mean, the character's name is Joe. <laughs> Joe's a female. Do you not remember the facts of life? <laughs> oh, good point. Good point. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, I, I, nothing's nothing's really festering up here. Yeah. I know who I want it to be. Like, I want it to be Jason Bateman. Because I'd start watching the show again. Kevin Hart? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Especially when you typed, it's a white guy. And that's all the information. <laughs> I, I did type that in the chat. Well, my mom's trying to FaceTime me here. Hold on. Ooh, she, maybe she knows. Yeah, get her on. <laughs> three three person team. <laughs> that's cheating. I'll tell you right now, if it's not old Hungarian stuff, she's not going to be any help. All right, well, we can eliminate our Hungarian comedians, Mason. Oh, that, that takes away. I, I better get rid of my uh, Olympic weightlifting question. Oh, they are legit. <laughs> That's why I said that. They, they are legit. Women shot put. I can believe that, too. Yeah, Mason, I, I don't know. I, I don't either. Jim Gaffigan. Hold on. Now she's calling me. Sure. Jim Gaffigan is fine with me. Uh, or ooh, could it be like Jason Sudeikis? He could play like that type of character. I don't know if he would be one of Eric's favorites, but I like him. Fred Armisen? Probably not. No, I doubt it. I, I don't know. I I I don't I have no idea. We're we're gonna check in with the fantasy answer of Jason Bateman. All right, so farewell of Gentry is checking in with Jason Bateman. And just get what? <sighs> Oh, he he's getting off the phone. He was getting all the inside scoop on the Hungarian weightlifters. All right, Eric, we've been waiting for you to get back. What's up? Farewell, Evan Gentry checked in with Jason Bateman. Oh, good answer. Well, uh, he actually, I I think he's like one of the funniest guys. Um, he's in one of my favorite movies, Hot Tub Time Machine. Um, oh, Rob Corddry. Yes. Damn <laughs> it. <laughs> so I we checked in with <laughs> we checked in with Rob Corddry. Ah, team will be getting points. The correct answer is Rob Cordry. He also had roles in Blades of Glory and Semi Pro. Oh, I love Rob Cordry. Damn yes, man. he's awesome. He is so funny. All right, question four. Jared Leto portrays what Olympic hopeful in a 1997 film? He is a handsome individual, too. I mean, we haven't mentioned you know enough handsome men in a few weeks, so. Still not on the level of... Gabriel Landeskog. Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll go ahead and check in. All right. So farewell, Elvin Gentry has checked in. Just get what? You guys can talk it out. This has not been my halftime. So I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm with you, Mason, entirely. It's, uh, there was that running... There was a movie about a, a long-distance runner in the late 90s. I want to say Prefontaine, but I, I don't know if that's the name of the movie or not. Um, and I think that's about a, a real guy. Like from and the, and the and the question was portrays what Olympic hopeful? So I think it's Steve Prefontaine. It sounds right, but play it safe and say Prefontaine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, if you're good with it, I'm good with it. Yeah. So let's let's uh, check in with uh, Prefontaine. All right, just get what checks in with Prefontaine and farewell, Elvin Gentry. What do you guys got? Really, could not think of too many Olympic hopefuls that they would make a movie about. Um, now that I hear them say that, I, I think I vaguely remember that actually. So I think they're correct. Um, <laughs> we checked in with Greg Luganis. <laughs> All right. Farewell. Evan Gentry checks in with Greg Luganis. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is Steve Prefontaine. Oh, it was Steve. Uh, was and, that? uh, yeah, the movie was Prefontaine. Um, so leading up to the 1976 Olympics that he was preparing for, he died in an automobile accident in 1975. He was 24 years old. That's why they made the movie. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen the movie. Question five. In The Pride of the Yankees, who portrays Babe Ruth alongside Gary Cooper as Lou Gehrig? Ooh. 
All right, Matt, where are you? Ernest Borgnine. I don't know. <laughs> Think of an old actor. Yeah, just, yeah. You want to go with that? Why not? All right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go for it. Check in. All right. So farewell, Evan Gentry's checked in. Just get what? You guys can talk it out. Gary Cooper is has been, like I said, he's been dead for... We did not kill him on this podcast. <laughs> he has been dead for since like the sixties. Like it's so he's super like if he's alive today, he'd be like 120. So thinking that Josh is not Josh has asked a question before. Um one of the one of our first episodes was like who did uh Brett Favre complete his first pass to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the answer was Brett Favre. So for him to ask a question about a movie from God knows when didn't expect any of us to know any of the actors in it so that puts my 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 head thinking maybe babe ruth played himself so this movie is 1930s 30s 40s at first i thought you were going to say gary cooper played both roles and this is like a parent trap lindsey lohan situation that Uh, sounds like a much better movie though (laughs) i don't think they had the technology i mean other than that i mean other than just picking a random old guy yeah other than let's just Saying Vincent like, Price, Orson like, Welles, I, yeah, Orson Welles, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Vincent starring, Price. starring Vincent Price as Babe Ruth. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna watch it right now. If that's the <laughs> <laughs> he was a chameleon. All right, just know that. I I like that idea well enough, and I'm not gonna come to anything more solid. Okay, so if you're if you're, if you're trying to play the kind of question, and, uh, I just I I, I feel uh, like that's not. It's not Josh's thing to ask super old questions. Yeah, it wasn't at least. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I thought maybe Matt might have been on the episode trying to throw him a bone. Yeah, handling his inner Matt. Yeah, because <laughs> if if he's if he's asking a question about the 1930s, he's saying we need to know actors from the 1930s. Which, if if it'll help, it was actually 1942. That I apologize. So, oh, apologize. Profuse, profuse that helps. It. So you know who it was? Gary Cooper's mother. <laughs> yeah, forget every name I said. Actually, <laughs> it's not it's not Humphrey Bogart anymore. I, I just forget wanted it. to correct you. It's not the 30s. Come on, World War II movie. So, <laughs> so I, I I mean, other than it was Clark Gable. I don't know yeah. who else is. I don't. I don't. I don't know when Babe Ruth died. I don't either. But Babe Ruth's a financer. I think we can check in with that and move on. All right, Babe Ruth, we're checking in. Right. So, just get what checks in with Babe Ruth and farewell, Elvin Gentry. What do you guys got? Well, um, we placed the time. I knew Gary Cooper was a '30s, '40s actor, and so Scott sent a wonderful list of A-list actors. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, this thought came to me that I was like. What if this is a trick question and Babe Ruth played himself in the movie? So we also went with Babe Ruth. Well, it's not really a trick question because <laughs> he actually did portray himself in the movie. Wow. So the correct answer is Babe Ruth. Uh, it is shown in the film that Lou Gehrig hits two home runs in a World Series game where Babe Ruth also homers. Such a situation never occurred. Fake news. <laughs> nice job finding the trick there guys i'm sorry it's not a trick but <laughs> uh he actually did do a couple other acting roles as well i don't remember if they were all himself or if he, he was in the sandlot i remember that <laughs> some lady gave it to me Ruth. <laughs> hey Ruth. <Ruth. laughs> you're killing me smalls i'm so glad i actually can get these references now <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I would like to point out you guys all got the oldest question correct. So it was honestly about I was about to call Kells and I was just like, listen. <laughs> oh, Kells would have known it like I'm like, that. it's about actors, I'm calling Kells. He would have known. Uh heading into the second half, we have the following scores. Uh farewell Elvin Gentry's at 220, and just get what is at 400. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Benchwarmers TP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks! Today's third quarter will be The Missing Link. The Missing Link. 
This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question, they will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question one. It may feel like a little bit of a carryover from halftime, but it's not. The 2016 animated short, The Boy Who Learned to Fly, is about what athlete? All right, Trevor, let's check in. All right, so just get what is checked in. So farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. I literally have nothing. I don't follow aviation, so I I don't know. (laughs) I feel like I've vaguely heard of this. I I just don't know any. So, all right, flies fast or jumps? Is it a hurdler? Sprinter? Is it Michael Jordan? I mean, he flew. It was poetry in motion. 2016, I'm trying to think of people that are relevant then. That would be, you know. Well, I mean, it's probably, it could be just as easily about a legendary athlete that just yeah. happened to come out in 2016. Right. I don't actually think it's Michael Jordan. I feel like I'd know about it if it was Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like that'd be a big thing. Yeah. I'm lost once again. So. I feel like I'm in an escape room. You can't escape. But the attendee went home and like I'm stuck in the room, but like they shut down for the night and the lights are off and I have to wait till the morning. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I don't have I don't even have a guess. I don't either. So we can go Michael Jordan. I I don't I don't know. I, I I doubt that's right. I doubt it too, but I don't I don't have anything better. All right. We'll check in with Air Jordan. All right, so farewell, Alvin Jeffrey checks in with Air Jordan. And just get what? How about you guys? So I thought just immediately first thing was Kobe Bryant, but didn't. I knew he did that that movie that won like an Oscar or something like that. But I I remember seeing this video somewhere. I don't know, probably in my YouTube day, just scrolling through randomly. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, Usain Bolt. You guys were sniffing around it, Mason and Scott, when you were talking about somebody fast. The correct answer is Usain Bolt. He has won back-to-back-to-back Olympic gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter events. Question two. Who did the Associated Press name the greatest athlete from the first 50 years of the 20th century? We'll go ahead and check in. All right. Farewell, Elvin Jeffries checked in. So just get what you guys can talk it out. All right. So I went to Olympics, but maybe not. You said Thorpe. I said Jim, I said Jim Thorpe. I also, also thought Jesse Owens along that Olympian route. Um, I just I just know Jim Thorpe is a big name from around then. Wouldn't that be Babe Ruth? It certainly could be. I guess I, I don't have much, much reason to go for one over another. I mean, Th- Thorpe would be good. I, I say we can go with either or. Okay. Let's go Let's go with your answer. Let's go with Jim Thorpe on that. We'll check in with Jim Thorpe. All right. Just get what is checked in with Jim Thorpe. And farewell, Elvin Gentry. What do you guys got? Yeah, first thought that came to my mind was also Jim Thorpe. So that's what we checked in with as well. I don't think there's probably anybody who would consider Babe Ruth the greatest athlete of any stretch of time. The correct answer is Jim Thorpe. The Pro Football Hall of Fame inducted him as part of its inaugural class in 1963. The theme-linked answers so thus far are Usain Bolt and Jim Thorpe. Moving on to question three. Who is the only male athlete to win both the 200-meter and 400-meter dash events at the same Olympics? We're checking in, Josh. All right. Just get what is checking in. Farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. I think it's Michael Johnson, but my knowledge of of track and field is is not much. I mean, Jesse Owens is possible. He won four in 1936, so two of them could have easily been 200, 400, and then like a a relay or something like that. Right. If you feel good about Michael Johnson, I'm fine with it. I don't feel feel good about it, but Eric said like he remembered it as if like he lived through it, so – so maybe if, if that's the case, that would take Jesse Owens off the table and keep um, Johnson. 
I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm very you old. Horse racing back in the day, don't you remember that? Seriously, yeah. Uh, I mean, I again, I, I don't have an inkling like closer to one than the other. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with with that. I mean, if if we know that Owens won four, uh, he he won four in 1936. Right. I, so I mean, you know, we at least we know that he won <laughs> enough to cover the criteria. How many did Michael Johnson win? In- I don't know. I just remember, like, when I was a kid, my dad would, like, watch him, and he was super fast and really sweaty. If you, I mean, if you want to go off just the fact that he had four medals, I'm fine with that. I just I Yeah. Know. Yeah. Let's, we should probably do that. It's probably a better guess. Okay. So we're going to check in with Jesse Owens. All right. So farewell, Evan Elvin Gentry's checked in with Jesse Owens. Just get what? What about you guys? So I I do remember this, um, having lived through it. I'm pretty sure he did it in the '96 Olympics, right, Trevor? I that's the what I remember. Yeah, and he had like his gold shoes and all this other stuff, and uh, um, so we checked in with Michael Johnson. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is Michael Johnson. As Eric said, he accomplished his feat at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. He won a second consecutive gold medal in the 400 event at the 2000 Sydney Games. So the theme-linked answers thus far are Usain Bolt, Jim Thorpe, Michael Johnson. Moving on to question four. Who holds the U.S. record in the 100-meter dash, making him the joint second-fastest sprinter, along with Johan Blake, in the history of the event after Usain Bolt? That's like the last person I know in that sport that hasn't been named. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I guess we'll go ahead and check in. All right. So farewell, Elf and Gentry's checked in. Uh, just get what? You guys can talk it out. It's got to be Tyson Gay. I, I sent you that name. Yeah. Justin Gatlin's a good name too, though. But I... Yeah, th- th- those are the two that I, had to, of, of, as terms of American sprinters, that's what I'm thinking of for, yeah. for, recent, for recent, at least. Tyson Gay, to me, is a... Sounds like a better answer. Yeah. But that gets rid of my theme link. Okay. Um, Do other, are there other answers that work better with your theme link? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I say we go with that. Cause I think it's, I think it's Tyson gay. Yeah. If, if we're, if we were both on that track. Okay. I think we can go for it and All right. check go it ahead, in. Check it in. Yep. All right. We'll check it with Tyson gay. All right. Just get what is checking in with Tyson gay. Uh, farewell, Alvin Gentry. What do you guys got? All right, Mason, so I lied. So there were two names <laughs> that I knew because I forgot about Tyson Gay, but I, I do know who he is. Um, but we checked in with the other one that I knew, and that's uh, Justin Gatlin. Okay, well, one team is getting points. The correct answer is Tyson Gay. He ran it in 9.69 seconds at the Shanghai Golden Grand Prix on September 20th, 2009. That is really fast. The theme-linked answers thus far are Usain Bolt, Jim Thorpe, Michael Johnson, and Tyson Gay. All right, moving on to question five. What athlete released a self-published autobiography in 2010 titled Soul to Soul, in which they review their childhood in Jamaica, including an early bout with malaria, that the Canadian press called, quote, an unconventional sports autobiography and the title is soul as in the city to soul as in your soul see i was thinking soul like the soul of your shoes so now thank you for clearing that up and apparently siri wanted to tell me all about seoul south korea josh we're gonna check in all right just get what is checked in so farewell elvin gentry you guys can talk it out Oh, Mason, for about the seventh consecutive question, I have no idea. There's a lot of places going on. There's Seoul, there's Jamaica that are named. Okay, so was there an Olympics in Seoul? Sure. I'm sure there was. I'm just throwing out because there's Jamaica, we have South Korea, and we have Canada. And also malaria to throw in there, too, which, again, isn't common anymore, you know? I mean, there's there's still some, but I just... Yeah, I... Right, but I, I mean, I would think that, you know, we're talking about especially if they were releasing something in 2010 that kind of seems like it's a memoir type thing, they're, you know, probably pretty old at the time that they're releasing it. You know, they've probably gone through a lot of life at that point. You know, it's got me thinking someone from like 
the 50s, 60s, maybe. Okay. I don't know that many Olympic athletes or athletes in general that fit anything close to this. Yeah, I, I, I don't either. Seoul, I'm trying to place where that, because I mean, I'm, I thought that Seoul hosted it in like the, hmm, I'm trying to place the time, like the six, it might be the 60s that they hosted. I don't remember, but it could very well be more recent. I, I don't even know what nationality of the person is. They could not even be Jamaican and just have been a young person in Jamaica. Right. I mean, you know, I, I, I literally, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. I don't have a theme. Yeah. I haven't had an answer since the Wu-Tang Clan. I'm going to just go with Smith and just punt this away. And Yes. Okay, we'll go with Smith. All right. So farewell, Alvin Gentry is checking in with Smith. Just got what? What do you guys got? You guys are going to be so mad because you, you could have gotten the answer with a different lucky last name. I didn't think it would be Johnson again because Michael Johnson. So go ahead, Trevor. Canadian Press thinking of a sprinter, Canadian sprinter, Ben Johnson. So we checked in with Ben Johnson. You hit the right clues. The clue is Seoul, 1988 Olympics, Canadian sprinter. The correct answer is Ben Johnson. Uh, He won two bronze medals in the 1984 Olympics in the 100 meter and the 4 by 100 meter relay. So the theme linked answers are Usain Bolt, Jim Thorpe, Michael Johnson, Tyson Gay, and Ben Johnson. So thus far, no team has submitted a theme guess. So both teams can possibly get 50 points. We can check in. So Jessica, what is checking in with their theme answer? Farewell, Elvin Gentry. Do you guys have anything you'd like to submit or as a guess? Is there like a, a sprinting or a running hall of fame? <laughs> Something that they would all be a part of? I, there very well could be a sprinting hall of fame, track and field hall of fame. I think they're all members of the Track and Field Hall of Fame. Okay, we'll we'll go with that answer. All right, farewell, Elvin Gentry is checking in with members of the Track and Field Hall of Fame, and just get what? What do you guys have for a theme guess? So we were talking about it for a while. I have some memory of something happening to Tyson Gay in terms of his medals or being stripped of something. Um, ben Johnson, I know, has had some controversy, and not sure about some others, but in terms of a theme we could think of, we uh, said that they were all stripped of a medal, of an Olympic medal. One team will be getting theme points. The correct answer is these are all athletes who were stripped of Olympic medals. It certainly did not help you to not know Ben Johnson, who was stripped of a gold medal at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Ben Johnson and Tyson Gay had theirs taken away uh, completely for their Olympics but Usain Bolt was stripped of his 2018 Olympic gold medal for the 4 by 100 meter relay because teammate Nesta Carter was found guilty of a doping violation. Jim Thorpe was stripped of his gold medals in 1913 when it was discovered that he had played baseball for money before the Olympics. His medals were later reinstated in 1982. And Michael Johnson was stripped of his 2000 Olympic gold medal for the 4 by 400 relay. This medal was stripped in 2004 after Jerome Young, who ran in the heats, was retroactively banned for doping from 1999 to 2001. In 2005, the Court of Arbitration for Sports restored the medals of the remaining athletes due to the fact that, according to the rules of the time, a team should not be disqualified because a doping offense of an athlete who did not compete in the finals. But in 2008, Antonio Pettigrew, who ran in the finals, admitted to doping from 1997 to 2003, meaning the team was once again disqualified. Freaking Antonio Pettigrew. (laughs) Brandon's brother. Well, Scott, I think you and I clinched the lowest missing link round ever with 20 (laughs) points. And honestly, like, that was kind of a half guess. So Yeah. Okay, heading into the fourth quarter, things are getting a little out of control. Uh, Farewell Elvin Gentry has 240 points, while Just Get What has 550 points. So that brings us to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. This quarter consists of five categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each. 
not to exceed their current point total. The categories for today are as follows. Question one, memorable grand slams. Question two, longest tenures with one NFL franchise. Question three, NHL repeat champions. Zero. Question four, single season NBA leaders. Question five, too many men on the field. It is now time for the teams to place their wagers via chat with the host. All right. So now that the wagers are in, on to the questions. Question one in memorable Grand Slams. What infielder for a Chicago team is the most recent player to hit a Grand Slam in a World Series game? Josh, we're going to check in. All right. Just get what has checked in. So farewell, Elvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. Uh, let me know your answer when you get to it and how much you wagered. All right. So you think you're, you're leaning more towards White Sox in 05, right? Yeah. Cause I mean, I feel like I remember if it was 2016 Cubs. I feel like that would be more memorable. Uh, all right. So, like I said, for the White Sox, we got Joe Creedy, Jose Ribe, Tadaguchi, Canerco, Krasinski. I mean, those were the starters. Like I said, of those lists, Canerco makes the most sense, but that doesn't really, it might not be. Don't remember him doing it. I mean, could be Joe Creedy. He had a nice series. I would be. I would lean towards Joe Creedy if we're choosing someone from 05. Okay. Like I said, I, I don't really know much about that team. I just knew that they won one in that time, and I figured, like I said, if it wasn't the 2016 Cubs, it would have to. The next one would be the obviously the White Sox. Right. So. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I don't remember any Cub doing it necessarily, but it certainly doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right, exactly. I'm I'm fine with Joe Creedy if that's all right. Cool. Sure, we're gonna check in with Joe Creedy. We wagered thirty nine points. All right, so farewell, Alvin Gentry. Checked in with Joe Creedy for thirty nine points, and just get what? How about you guys? So I know Paul Konerko hit a grand slam in the World Series against the Astros. I jumped out of my seat. Um, Creedy did not hit one. He had a good series, but he did not. Um, but I ninety percent sure that Addison Russell hit one um, in the playoff. It was either the NLCS or it was the World Series. But I know he hit one um, for the Cubs. Um, so we, you know, eventually checked in with uh, Addison Russell for one hundred points. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is Addison Russell. Nice, Eric. He hit it in Game Six of the twenty sixteen World Series for the Cubs. Before that, uh, Paul Konerko hit a grand slam in game two of the 2005 World Series for the White Sox. Moving on to question two. In longest tenure for one NFL franchise, who holds the record for most seasons spent with only one franchise for a defensive player? Josh, we're going to check in. All right. Just get what is checked in. So farewell, Alvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. You know, Ray Lewis was there about 15 or so years for pinpointing. So I'm thinking it's going to be someone closer to 20 ish, like somewhere like 18, 19. What about like a Steeler, Mason? Okay. So like uh, Mean Joe Green, Jack Ham. Probably not Mean Joe Green. I don't know how long Jack Ham played on that team. I'm just tending to think it's going to be a defensive lineman just because those, they sure. tend to last longer than like. A linebacker, maybe. I, secondary just does not I, – I mean, for someone to last that long, it would be – like a 40-year-old corner is not exactly ideal. Yeah, I mean, defensive linemen, even – I mean, linebackers tend to play pretty long, like middle yeah, linebackers, so, you know. Tending to think it's front seven. It, it seems like there there's a lot of possible answers, even though there probably isn't, but it also makes it hard to pinpoint it. Yeah. To carry on with the theme of this game, I don't know the answer. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, we can go with Ray Lewis. I don't think it's right, but at least it's someone that played his entire career with one team. I guess we'll just check in with Ray Lewis. We wagered 100 points. Okay, so farewell, Elvin Gentry's checked in with Ray Lewis for 100 points. And just get what? How about you guys? Ray Lewis came to mind. Um, but one guy I did, I, I remember watching him as a Cowboys fan throughout the, the, the 90s, early 2000s, when he finally retired. Uh, fastest man in the NFL. 
Um, cornerback Daryl Green played 20-something years with Washington. So checked in with Daryl Green for 100 points. And Eric hit it right on the head. Daryl Green played 20 seasons, all with the Washington football team. Now, you guys can feel at least a little better. Scott Mason, second place is Ray Lewis with 17 seasons. The only two players who've played for one franchise for longer was Lou Groza and Jason Hansen. Each played 21 seasons. Okay, moving on to question three in NHL repeat champions. From 1976 to 1983, what two teams completed back-to-back-to-back-to-back Stanley Cup championships? Trevor, we can check in. Just Get What has checked in. So farewell, Alvin Gentry. You guys can talk it out. The Montreal Canadiens, why not? Okay, yeah, they won quite a few. Okay, so that's one. Yep, same here. So uh, let's say Canadiens and... We can, we can always go with our favorite uh, 1970s player, Clark Gillies, and uh, the Islanders. <laughs> That's around the right time. I don't know. Do you want to say the Blackhawks? We can go Blackhawks. I mean, I, I literally just picking two teams is fine with me at this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shocker, we wagered zero, so it really doesn't matter. We're checked in with the Canadians and the Blackhawks. All right. So farewell, Evan Gentry checks in for zero points with the Montreal Canadiens and the Chicago Blackhawks. Just get what? How about you guys? After much much discussion, Trevor and I checked in with uh, the Montreal Canadiens and um, Mason, Clark Gillies, New York Islanders. For how many points? 100 points. And the correct answers are Montreal Canadiens and New York Islanders. Between these eight Stanley Cups, the Canadiens and the Islanders lost a total of six games, three games each. Question four in single season NBA leaders. Who set the single season benchmark for three point field goal percentage while playing for the Utah Jazz, making 53.64% of their three pointers? We're going to check in. All right. Farewell, Elvin Gentry's checking in. So just get what you guys can talk it out. Let me know your answer and your wager. You threw out Byron Russell. Yeah, um, Jeff Hornacek, Gordon Hayward. Fits the criteria of being on the Utah Jazz. He's a three-point guy. Yeah, I was trying to think, is this going to be a three-point specialist, like someone who, that's their thing? I originally had brought up Joe Ingles as someone who I know has shot some threes for the Utah Jazz, but, yeah. but I don't remember hearing anything about it. I don't either. There's there's not a name I super, feel super confident in. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to it. Should we just throw out, throw out a name and run with it? What what name do you like the best? Is Andre Karolinko a name? It is. I know he shot some threes. Might be better than what I got. For what it's worth, and maybe it's not much, in my mental mind of Andre Karolinko, he is in the corner shooting a three. I I like that logic. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I don't think we're going to go anywhere better than that. Let's check in. Andre Karolinko. For 100 points. Just get what is checked in with AK-47 himself, Andre Kirilenko, for 100 points. And farewell, Elvin Gentry. What do you guys got? Yeah, we had a similar thought process. Um, you know, Joe Ingles was a name that I threw out there, but I don't think it's him. And Mason kind of said he'd remember it if it happened that recently. Um, some other guys on the Jazz, Jeff Hornacek was right off the jump, was kind of the guy I was thinking. I remember him being a lot of three-point shootouts with the Suns, and then when he went over to the Jazz, he was a beneficiary of a lot of Carl Malone double teams, and Malone would throw it out and knock down threes. Um, we checked in with Jeff Hornacek for 100 points. Then I thought – I couldn't remember if, whether or not Kyle Korver played for Utah at all, and I think he did, so it could be Kyle Korver, but I'm hoping it's Jeff Hornacek. All right, so farewell, Elvin Gentry checked in with – Sorry, who did you check? Jeff, Jeff Hornacek. Hornacek. For, for how many points? Uh, 100. 100. You, you threw me off because your secondary hoping it wasn't the right answer is the right answer. Yep. Uh, in the 09-2010 season, Kyle Korver hit that mark, the 53.64%. Wow. Did not know he played for the Jazz. He's played for him twice. He's had two different stints. I remembered it right at the end. Yeah, I was like, right after we answered, I was like, oh my God, it's Kyle Korver. So there there have been only five other players that have had at least one season making at least 50% of their three-point attempts. They are Steve Kerr, yep. Tim Legler, yep. 
John Sunvold, Jason Capono, and Detlef Shrimp. I had some of those names, but I was like, none of them ever played for Utah. And so no points awarded for that question. Moving on to question five in too many men on the field. In Australian rules football, when a team has more than the permitted number of players on the playing surface, aside from a free kick being awarded and a 50 meter penalty being imposed, what other penalty is imposed upon the offending team? Okay. We're going to check in with that. I think, I think I know what it is. All right. So farewell. Elvin Gentry's checked in. Just get what you guys can talk it out. Let me know your answer and your wager. I saw some ridiculous rule where I don't know what penalty it went with, but you lost all your points. Wow. So is that bad enough to lose all your points? That seems like a, that seems like a brutal penalty. Right? Well, that way you never have too many men on the field. So I, I, unless you can think of something else. I won't think of anything that has any sort of confidence behind it. All right. Checking in with uh, losing all your points, which is a little harsh, but we wagered 100 points. All right, so just get what checked in with losing all your points for 100 points. And farewell, Elvin Gentry. What did you guys come up with and how much did you wager? Um, Well, I'm going to plug SB Nation again because there's a video about weird rules. And I just remembered this. It was about Australian rules. It was a really important match, I think. And people were trying to run off the field and you call for a count and you all line up. And they were pushing people back on the field that were trying to get off. And so like it was a big mess or whatever and if i remember correctly which i thought this was kind of crazy i think this the guy was talking said it was the only time that this can happen like in a major sport is that you reset all the way down to zero points so that's what i had in mind and so that's what we checked in with for how many points for the same number of points you'd have hopefully if you have too many men on the field zero apparently you don't get this penalty very often because a team shall lose all points which it has scored in the match up to the time of the count. So don't have more than your 18 players on the field at one time. That is a harsh penalty. Brutal. Brutal. But don't do it. Just yeah. don't. Isn't 18 enough? <laughs> Isn't that a, a sitcom from uh, the 80s? <laughs> That's eight is enough. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Okay, so the game has come to an end, and here are the final scores. Farewell, Elvin Gentry made sure that they did not get goose-egged. They finish with one point. I'm not a three-time member of that club. (laughs) (laughs) You are the only two-time member. But anyway, our clipboard captains of the game, who are receiving the coveted Sage Rosenfels Award with 850 points, is just get what? So congratulations, guys. Is there anything, guys, you want to say before we call it a day? I want to say th- thanks to Eric for carrying me through halftime. Could have done it without you. You helped out quite a bit today, so that's, that's all I ask. I'll chime in. Trevor, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for being such a fan of the show. Really appreciate it. Like The support from, from you and everyone else on the bench is overwhelming, and we're getting listeners at a rate that we not only did not fathom, but that like we – just can't like we can't even keep up with it at this point like it, it's yeah. ridiculous and and we're just so grateful and thankful you know thanks for coming on you more than held your own and you're certainly welcome back on anytime thanks for having me guys yeah i for a long time i've been lo- i've been looking for sports trivia podcasts for whatever reason there, there, there wasn't one that i gravitated towards and latched onto but then found bench warmers and was like this is it i found it so it's been really exciting i well, appreciate that thanks a lot for coming on and Listen, you're a great teammate today. Thank you. Cool. Mason, you got anything? Yeah, pretty much echo all of that. And uh, it's hard when a team sweeps halftime and third quarter and almost sweeps the fourth quarter. It's, you know, it's almost impossible at that point. But uh, it is tough. Yeah. Scott still enjoyed being teammates with you, even though we only got one point. Always, man. Always. He needs that pre and post game. I don't know what I need at this point. I need brain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Trevor, yeah, thanks for coming on. And um, you had me write some stuff I don't want to write, which is anything Wisconsin-based. But, hey, for the good of the podcast, I'm I'm willing to throw in some wheelhouse from even somebody from Wisconsin. So I know it must have been hard. It it was. (laughs) It was. 
Thanks for listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch! Stretch! Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the ball. Yes! Yes! Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.